Okay, so the reconstruction of the drawing begins with removing the head and the wings from the figure. So the goal is to be able to change out different wings, clothes, features, and accessories, you know, as quickly and smoothly um, as I can. Uh, so, so I'm using the lasso tool on the left side, you know, right below the rectangle mark, uh, marquee tool over there to the left. Um, so I remove the wings from the figure and the figure is on its own layer. Uh, so next I selected the duplicate layer of the figure and wings and then I connected and began uh, erasing and removing the figure uh, from the wings. So this would allow the wings to be on their own le level uh, layer as well. Now uh, I realized that I needed to go over the line work uh, so that it's uh, smoother and fairly even, you know, as far as the width of the, uh, of the uh, stroke of the outline of the uh, drawing because uh, this will make it easier to select areas of the drawing with the selection tool you know when you want to add in the, uh, the the colors to the clothes and throughout the figure and the flowers and uh, I'm also continuing um, and connecting the uh, line work of the legs and torso and um, this way I can fill the flat colors of the skin tones easier uh, with the paint bucket tool located on the left side um, so I can draw on top of the figure using a separate layer to draw the clothes and accessories because I'm going to be constantly, constantly changing the uh, outfits out for different women themes um, and nationalities. Um, so, and it would have been a lot easier to redraw the figure maybe if I still had the original photos of the models that were posing. Um, so at this time I was just kind of winging it. You know, and now I have a uh, now I have a, 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 a bare figure on a separate layer to interchange the clothes and things like that. Uh, so here I revisited the wings and closed off the shape of the wings in order to fill them with color using the selections if I decided to use it uh, or need it, you know. And um, then the head was separated from the body uh, on a separate layer. So I started retracing the roses. Uh, each rose was on a separate layer so that I could move them around, rearrange them and change the sizes and the colors a lot easier if I needed to for a, a different uh, Women's Time to Shine thing. And, um, and then now I want to fill it in the color. So now I'm adding color to the figure and cleaning up the line work along the way. And notice
fresh eye uh, colors the face in on a separate layer from the body. Uh, it makes it easier to change out the face, hairstyles, and color complexions. And at this stage, uh, you can see how the layers uh, were recognized, were reorganized to select different areas of the figure and accessories. So. I was playing around with ways, you know, to render the figure with minimum detail, portraying light and shade. You know, kind of like, I was kind of thinking of like cell shading, how, how it's done in comic books. You know, they usually use like a a, 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 a mid-tone and then a dark tone and then, a, you know, like little highlights here and there. And, um, but that was part of the reason uh, I was still kind of hesitant because at this point I wasn't sure if I was going to build this with like an app that allows you to uh, a person to create and design their own figure and interchange it. So that meant that, that would have meant that I would have had to have a lot of layers, a lot of um, features and options to really, really give people a lot of options to create their own uh, character from all of that. So. Uh, that's why I didn't really go full, really, really deep, full detail rendering with this because I wanted to keep it simple, you know, because um, then it's a hassle trying to switch it out if you got too much detail. And then the, your files get bigger too. Now, you'll also notice that I may need to finish up the hands since the style of clothing may, may not show the hands fully. Because when I remember I drew it on a um, Bristol board with her wearing clothes. Um, so you really couldn't see her hands. But since I'm going to be interchanging them, it might have gaps in it like you see there. But um, well, we'll get, I'm going to get to that. But then I filled in the figure the wings and clothes and then with color and notice how I'm experimenting with changing the colors very easy and using the adjust uh, colors effect and this is in painter uh, still by the way I believe and you can find that effect under the effects menu to find a tonal control sub menu and adjust colors so I decided to revisit the face head of the figure and I duplicated the original face and hair and uh, created a new head with the hair on a separate layer so now I can swap out the uh, hairstyles much easier and now you see where I'm, uh, I'm going with all of this now. So it makes it much easier to test out uh, what works and what doesn't work uh, regarding hairstyles and everything else. And, uh, and I created the look for the Native American version. You'll see some of that progress later on. So now I'm back at it again and I'm reconstructing the face again, uh, creating the Native American. 
So I revisited the drawing and um, this time I separated the head from the body and I decided to also separate the facial features from the face to interchange expressions um, and different shapes of the eyes, brows, nose, and lips. And uh, one of the things I should have done was adjusting her cheekbones, you know, the jawline on the left and the right sides were off balance. And um, But either that or I could have just tilted her head because if you tilt your head, then this, uh, the jawbone is lower here and it's higher up there. But, you know, it's cool. I still uh, can work it out. And it could work. But besides that, um, I began working on a costume for the Native, Native American thing. So I collected a lot of photos of Indians on um, with clothing, costumes, accessories, and I also collected images of abstract pa patterns and um, some other little design elements to add to the clothing, make it interesting and kind of give it an authentic look, you know. Um, so then Then I reconstructed the face once again after I did the Indian and um, this time I used my sister as a model and this was like after I did a few of them and I got feedback from some of the women so after I got some feedback from them oh, about the illustrations I decided to change the body language and the expression on the face and uh, it was only because remember I was only showing part one of the drawing I remember at the very beginning I had two verses, her, uh, you know, looking down thinking, and then the next one she was like, you know, up, flying up, you know, up, up high and very, very dynamic and happy. So, um, so it was being kind of misread out of context with them only seeing the first version. So I decided to use my sister Chanel as a reference, since so she's just naturally this vibrant, lively um, looking and uh, you know, the lady, and uh, she got this very outgoing, you know, attitude about her, very bright. So, um, so you see me starting out with an ink drawing on her face, right? And I actually made a blooper, and I don't care, I tell you, you know, everybody makes bloopers, man, no matter what, what she do as a profession. And with this, I had, I accidentally placed the eyes where her eyebrow line should go. And I didn't realize that I was like, it's too funny, man. And so, but it was an easy fix though. I just, 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 just pulled it down. But it was still, the shapes were still accurate as far as it, it's just that it was in the wrong place. So I drew her hair. Then I decided to draw her hair separate from her head. And again, making it easier to swap out hairstyles and accessories. So you'll also notice I'm no longer working in Corel Painter. So I decided to work on the rest of the collection in Affinity Photo. For, for a few reasons. Uh, firstly, uh, it's much easier to get to the layers and move things around. Um, secondly, it's faster to work in and I like how the simple brushes feel as I draw. Um, they seem to grip the page, you know, the layers consistently with my hand movement and pressure. Um, one more difference was I now have a laptop to handle video, video screen capture video um, a lot smoother. So my seven-year-old Dell laptop just couldn't handle the video well on the newer Windows platform. And um, a few basic things to note in Affinity Photo that contrasts Photoshop are uh, pretty much over, uh, like I began using Affinity Photo as an alternative to Photoshop Illustrator and in design with Affinity Photo Designer and Publisher, you know, because they are very powerful alternatives. Uh, so they're about $49.99 each and you own them with no subscriptions and free updates. So uh, that was pretty much it.
Oh, but with the few layer, the, the few things that you have to do uh, to remember also with between Photoshop and Affinity Photo is when you have layers and just say you want to when you group layers together. Like say if you got like facial features and you want them all on one in one group under a layer, and then you want to maybe say if you wanted to flatten the layers the, that group out, you have, so underneath that group that folder that's grouped. You have to have another layer underneath that folder so when you flatten that folder it'll all collapse together and not collapse and combine one of your other layers that you need that you may have some some drawing or some uh, text or something on there so you just got to remember that part Okay, so uh, so now I wanted to take you back to the uh, the original poem I wrote, right? And this was when it was titled "My Time to Shine." So so now you know why it was titled "My Time to Shine." You know, it was inspired by Mona Lisa's song, and that theme, uh, "My Time to Shine," and uh, and then the other part that I wanted to do was to, uh, go back to the poem, like I was saying. So, like, as far as the poem, like, I always felt like it wasn't finished or I needed to do another version of it. Maybe because at the time it felt like I was kind of, like, rushing and trying to get the book. Because this was part of a book, too, so I was trying to get the uh, book done, too. But at that time, I just couldn't think of what else to say or probably just didn't take the time out to do it. But here it goes. You may like it. Okay, so I found a book, and um, I decided to just read it from here. So, uh, so then I won't take uh, away from the original that I did and kept it as close as possible. So, here we go. Wonderful sister, you're so amazing and beautiful. When you walk by, I can see that light shine so bright within you. It is the power that drives you, and your secret to excel through life's obstacles. Every man should understand that your love and divinity is valuable upon any measure. You are all individually unique and great, and your love is worth the wait. You don't have to wait for a man to give you uh, material things. You know that God is the key to you and your source and all of your needs. Your children may have given you stress and pain. A brother may have played you and did some nasty things. Some of you have had to go to school, work, and spend time with the kids, and there were times when you wanted to give up and leave but you stayed and somehow endured the pain and rather given the credit uh, you deserve as great achievers and contributors to society and society as a whole has pressed you down to restrain your being yet you still found a way to stand up and weather the storm and there were many long cold and lonely nights yet you still look to the heavens because you know the storms and darkness don't last forever Infinitely, your love will forever radiate light and lead others out of darkness. A young girl watches and dreams of being like you, an angelic princess, planting her seeds for harvest, preparing for the season to produce change for the world around her. Many people will come around and see her do many great works. As she walks the earth, everything around her just grows and grows and grows. Everything that was dead or froze will come to life, vibrant and abundant from her brilliant light within. As a man, I will forever acknowledge, appreciate, and cherish you as God Mother Earth. Not the finest, rarest jewels found could measure your worth. Stand tall, hold your head high, spread your wings and soar high into the sky. Like a colorful butterfly on a beautiful sunrise scene, my time to shine, my time to shine. Thank God, it's my time. And that's the original. Thanks for listening. All right, now, so for the rest of this uh, this demo, this commentary, uh, I was just going to play a little bit of the uh, the music that inspired it from the 90s. So you may or may not have heard of it. And uh, either way, you may, uh, you know, you may like it and look it up. So I'll leave a link uh, below and you can check out the original song that it was inspired by, you know, the full song. Um, so this one's the one, the Whitehead Brothers. Uh, beautiful black princess 
And then following that is the Mona Lisa's uh, My Time to Shine. So, I don't know. I'll see if I can get away with squeezing it in there. But uh, the other verses as well. But I hope you enjoyed uh, what I had to share today on the um, reconstructing and resurrecting the uh, My Time to Shine and converting it and updating it to uh, uh, Women's Time to Shine for my NFT collection. So, uh, thank you for listening. This is uh, Mike B, Michael Burton. And uh, please like and subscribe and share share a link. And, um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next channel. Not the next channel, I'll see you on the next uh, video.